Today, we have a spoiler-free review of the new Amazon Prime series, Swarm. Swarm comes to Amazon Prime Friday, March 17th. Swarm is set between 2016 and 2018, and it follows Dre, played by Dominique Fishback, who is a fan of a uh, pop singer, uh, Nyjah, I believe a fictional pop singer, just an absolutely obsessed fan. And her obsession as a fan takes her on a cross-country journey that is completely unexpected to you, the viewer, as well as Dre, the character. What grabbed me right away about Swarm was it is executive produced by Donald Glover. Donald Glover along with Janine Neighbors, but I've been a fan of Donald Glover for a long time. Uh, Glover also directs the pilot episode. I was unfamiliar with the story, but there's an interesting thing right in the beginning that says this is not a work of fiction. Any similarities, you know, that same boilerplate thing, but instead of saying are unintentional, it says it is completely intentional. I actually had to rewind and watch that a couple of times to make sure I got it right. The show's a bit of a slow burn. It starts off explaining who Dre is, her situation, her friends, who the Nyjah, the singer is. It kind of gives you all of that, and a lot of it is done through the lens of social media. I'm sure we're going to be seeing that more and more in shows. Maybe it's just me being an older guy, but it feels like it's more directed at teen girls. And fine, great. There should be shows for teen girls. That's fine. But what's confusing is I feel like the show is aimed at teen girls. The writing feels like it's aimed at teen girls, but there's some really graphic stuff that if I were making a show, I probably wouldn't aim it at teen girls. Teen girls. There's a lot of nudity, a lot of hardcore drug use. There's a lot of pretty graphic things going on. It, none of it is, you know, in your face, over the top, but just given the way the dialogue is and the writing and the obsession with social media, it really does feel like something aimed at a younger generation. And maybe I'm just out of touch, but it feels like the aim and what they're delivering don't really match up with the age group that they're going for. The episodes are on the shorter side. Uh, the first one's 35 minutes. I believe the second one is, you know, within a couple minutes of that. I only got two in. Normally, I like to give a show three to see if it grabs me to give it a chance. A lot of times, pilots are not all that uh, comprehensive of what the actual series is going to be. I could only do two. In the first episode alone, I had checked how much longer was left in the episode before I even hit the 20-minute mark, which is never a good sign. And it takes too long before what the series is going to be about to actually kick off. Now, I am keeping this spoiler free. Uh, Amazon also requested a bunch of do not reveals for this series. So I don't want to give you what those inciting incidents actually are. If you are curious in this series, I would go in as blind as possible. I already mentioned that it is based on real events. Don't research those real events before watching the series, because I think it'll give you spoilers that you don't want. I'm sure there is an audience for this show. I'm just not it. After the couple episodes I watched, I realized what their formula is going to be or is most likely already. It seems like it's a slow burn. You're living in the world. You're living with Dre for a while. And then in the final act, in the last few minutes, everything happens and it's supposed to grip you into the next episode. And it actually did a good job because I almost quit after the pilot. And then when it kicked off and I saw, oh, that's what the show is going to be about. I was curious to see more. And just going into the second episode, it kind of felt like the exact same story as the first episode, where there wasn't really a whole lot going on, and then all of a sudden, here's everything, and let's rinse and repeat. I'm not saying that's the entire series. It's I had access to uh, six episodes. I only watched the first two, so maybe episode three, episode four, they totally change up the formula. That's not the impression that I got, and it just didn't hold my interest enough to devote more time to it. Another thing that didn't really hold my interest was I kind of mentioned a little bit about the writing where it felt like it was geared towards a younger audience, maybe a female audience. I wasn't into the dialogue. Uh, sure, it sounds natural as to people who live in these situations, likely talk, could talk. That was realistic enough, but it's a bit grating and annoying to listen to after a while. There's a lot of repetition. There's a lot of really, really predictable lines. I was literally sitting in my office watching this, finishing the character's lines on a show that a few days ago I'd never even heard of, let alone had seen before. That's not a good sign. Uh, I don't like the way it's shot. It's uh, it's in four by three, first off, which I don't know why. I mean, sometimes 
shows do the four by three thing when it's set in the eighties or the nineties to make you feel like whatever, but we all have widescreen TVs. You know, we're all watching 16, nine. I don't know why it's in four by three. It doesn't really make any sense. The coloring color correctness is off. It has this kind of dingy green tint to it. And I know it's supposed to put you in a frame of mind. It's not supposed to be this crisp, clear, perfect HD picture because it's kind of a gritty story in a gritty world, but it just looks bad. The lighting is off. A lot of times there's intense lighting behind a character. The contrast is down. So it's tough to see the characters. It's, it's an ugly show to look at. And I, I hate this thing that shows do when they're trying to be artsy or the framing is off. I mean, I'm not down here talking to you. I'm trying to sit center frame. I'm trying to have the lighting even on myself. And I'm just a guy in his home office with a light I got on Amazon and shades over my window. I'm not a professional production team. I'm not Amazon Studios. I, I just think a little bit of effort should be into making it watchable. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but watchable. As far as a show using social media as a vehicle, it's just something I'm going to have to accept. And the way they blend it in, it feels right. It feels like you're in a normal world. The only thing I'd be a little bit worried about is if I created this show is... Legacy is probably too lofty a word for the show, but that's probably just biased because I didn't really care for it. But they use social media as it exists right now directly. And in even two to three years, it can date it. I mean, it, it could be like mentioning MySpace in a few years with the social media aspect of the show. We'll still get it. It, it still does what it's supposed to do. With it being such a large part of the show, it just seemed like a questionable choice to have it that direct. I don't really have a lot else to say about Swarm. There was a couple things in there that piqued my interest, but not enough for me, to, for me to keep going. If you're curious, like I said, go in as blind as you can because the surprise is what's going to grab you. And if it works for you, that's awesome. I'd actually like to hear about your experience with it. I think there is something here. There's something very interesting going on. It just wasn't delivered in a package that I want to spend six to eight hours with or even three to four hours given that they're shorter episodes. And because they're shorter episodes, maybe it's easier for you to give it a shot. If you want to give Swarm a shot, it is coming to Amazon Prime Video, March 17th. I don't know if it's a week-to-week -week or all episodes at once. I guess it's up to you, the viewer. My two cents is uh, Swarm's a pass for me. I'm not going to be diving back in. I'm not going to be finishing it. I do appreciate Amazon Prime sending us these screeners. It's a show that would not have been on my radar. I like to see what's out there. I like to try new things. A lot of times it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's the unfortunate thing. But what doesn't work for me could work for somebody else. Please make sure to like and subscribe. We've got a lot more screeners, comic reviews, unboxings, movie reviews, interviews, all that stuff coming your way. You're not going to want to miss out. Make sure you listen to So Is Your Podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. So Is Your Podcast.com is your resource for reviews, recommendations, videos, merchandise, and more. We love hearing feedback, so drop some in the comments. Leave something on social media. All accounts will be found after the show and in the show notes. So is your podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows, audio and video. And on a more personal note, a good friend that I have an ongoing comedy comic series. It's called Social Studies. Follows a group of friends through high school as they deal with all the ups and downs of being a teenager, trying to figure out who you are. We write it like a sitcom and we do it in the style of the 90s cartoons that we grew up on and loved, the ones that inspired us. It's a very cartoony look. It's a very fun feel. You can find all available issues at socialstudies.comic.com. We have a bunch on comiXology and a bunch on global comics. Thanks.